Hey folks, today we're going to talk about lab 12, which deals with threading. Um, so the idea of threading is that you can take a job and you can break it up into smaller chunks and then have each of the chunks run on a different processor or in a different core. Um, so today what I decided we were going to do for a quick example is we're going to take a look at a program that goes and retrieves the weather off of a URL and then shows it to you every 15 minutes on a display. So this would be like a little weather app that you might have on your phone or something like that. Um, so I've already gone ahead and coded this in both um, languages. And so this URL that you can see here is the language, uh, is the Java version of it. And um, I'm just going to step you through how this works. And specifically, we're going to focus on the thread part of it, um, because that's, again, what this language or what this uh, lecture is about. Um, so basically, what's going on here is we have a weather class. And in Java, we're going to specify that that class implements runnable. Um, runnable is an interface that is built in that requires that you must have a method called run, which is a public void run. And so the public void run that you write in your runnable class, or sorry, in your um, in your class that implements runnable, is going to have the actual work that you want done in this thread. And then once you have implemented the class, you're then going to instantiate the class and actually start a thread of it. So over in my main method here real quick, this is all I had to do. I created an instance of that weather class. So weather my weather equals new weather, that's just instantiating a class like you've done a million times. And then I created a thread and I said thread t1 equals new thread and I passed it my weather, which is the object that is implementing runnable. And then finally I said t1.start, which is going to start that thread. All right, so let's take a look at what the actual weather class is doing itself. Um, so this is kind of a, a cool little example. The National Weather Service provides an open API where you can download weather information. And so very specifically, if you were to go to this URL in a web browser, um, you would be able to see the current weather forecast. Now it comes back to you in a kind of a weird format. It, the format is called JSON, and this is just a way of encoding data. So if I copy this and I paste it, um, this is the current weather according to the National Weather Service in the Kennesaw campus at the moment that I'm running this URL. So all I did was I paste that in up here. And so if you look through it, you can see that it's, it's not terribly complex. There's a field called properties, and underneath that you have something called timestamp, and that tells you when this um, last observation was made. There is a area called text description, and that tells you the current conditions. It's currently clear. And then there's an area called temperature, which has the current temperature listed in Celsius, which right at the moment is 7.2, so it's pretty cold. Um, you're going to have to convert that into Fahrenheit if you want that to look um, like Fahrenheit. So, all right, so back to the code. So basically what's happening here is I use the URL class um, to create a new URL. And in order to do that, you have to import java.net URL. And you're also going to want Java IO, IO exception because the URL class, when you open it, can cause um, exceptions to be thrown if that URL doesn't work or the server is busy or anything like that. All right, the next step was I used a scanner to um, connect to that um, URL and actually pull down the text out of there. And then this is just reading a file like we did a couple of weeks ago here in the uh, file.io class. Um, so I just have a while not, or while it has a next line, then go ahead and pull the next line from that scanner object. And I'm adding these all onto a string called lines. If I were to do this print statement, which is currently commented out right after this, I would simply see that, the whole document that it returned. And then after that, the remainder of the code here is to take that um, response that I got back and parse it so that I can pull out the information that I want and print them to the screen. So there's something called JSON object, which takes a JSON object. And again, this is called JSON. That's the format here. And what it does is it creates for you an object, and then you can use JSON or get JSON object properties um, to get individual bits out of it. So you can see here, I'm asking it to pull out um, into a string timestamp properties timestamp. And if you look at the original one, that's what I'm saying is I'm telling it to go to properties and then pull out timestamp. And so it's going to give me that value that's right there. And then the second thing that I'm doing is I'm asking it to get properties text description. And again, that's going to be properties text description, which is going to be this string right here, the, the word clear. 
And then finally, I'm asking it to get properties, temperature, value, and that's going to be, oops, um, that's going to be properties, temperature, value. And so uh, that's going to return to me this 7.2. All right, so nothing wild and crazy there. That's just um, a particular object called a JSON object, which allows you to parse something that's in JSON format and get back particular bits out of it. So once I get each of those, I have a string now that's the timestamp and a string that's the condition and a double that's the temperature. Uh, the last thing I had to do was I had to convert the temperature into Celsius. That's how you take a Fahrenheit, or sorry, that's how you take a Celsius temperature and convert it into Fahrenheit. You multiply it by nine fifths and add 32. And then I just printed them out. And the last thing that's happening in here is I'm then sleeping for 900,000 milliseconds. All right, a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. So this is effectively sleeping for 900 seconds, which comes out to 15 minutes. So this whole thing is in a while loop. And that while loop literally just says while true. So it's going to go forever in this thread. But basically, it's going to go fetch the weather, print it out on the screen, sleep for 15 minutes, and then come back up and do it again and do it again and do it again. Um, so all of that is wrapped in a try block and you're going to need exceptions here because anytime that you're dealing with threads or you're dealing with file IO and this is dealing with both, you're going to want to catch exceptions because uh, you can get exceptions from opening the URL. You can get exceptions when you try to read the information in. I can actually get exceptions from the JSON object because some of those properties may not be there if they change the format of their JSON. Um, so all that needs to be wrapped in a try catch block. All right, so when you run all of that uh, over here on the right, what you're going to see is that it's nothing terribly exciting. It just prints out the current condition and the current temperature, and then it sleeps for 15 minutes, and then it does it again, and then again, and again. And so it'll run forever and ever. And again, you could imagine that this could be something that could be used on a phone. Um, so you could have a phone where you open an app and it always has the temperature on it. And this might be running in the background where the thread just wakes up every 15 minutes, grabs the latest weather, and then updates the app to show you the information. So that's why you would do this in a thread. It's because the thread is going to be sitting in the background, mostly asleep, um, waiting for itself to wake back up again and then do another fetch. So that's the idea of threads. Hopefully that makes sense uh, today. They're very, very simple. In Java, you're simply creating a class, you're implementing runnable, and then you have to define a method that is a public void run. Inside of that method, you put in the work that you actually want the thread to do. And then when you want to make instances of it, you create an object, you add it to a thread, and you ask the thread to start. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully that gets you started on today's lab and you have some fun with threads and I will see you guys next week.